free-to-air broadcasters have successfully lobbied the Morrison government to suspend quotas for locally made drama, documentaries and children's shows. It's now under review, but local producers warn the end of quotas will spell the end of cherished Australian shows. Nassim Kadem reports. Neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours. It's 35 years since Neighbours first aired on TV screens. Now the company that makes the iconic drama warns it could be under threat. I think in the free-to-air environment, Neighbours most certainly could be at risk if the quotas were to change. The networks want to see certain quotas scrapped for good. TV advertising revenue has been decimated. It fell 22% over the first half of the year. These rules are a bit like stepping into a time machine back into the 1980s. That's when most of the rules that we're currently living with were dreamt up. At a time when we had three commercial television stations, we had no internet, we had no pay TV. A detective needs a great eye for detail. The current rules state that 55% of content shown must be Australian. But there's no certainty the sub-quotas on dramas and children's shows will come back next year. Without them, local producers fear they won't survive. Without that finance, I can't trigger my productions and then I can't get any income and therefore we're um, on tender hooks. Over the past 20 years, Suzanne Ryan has produced 19 children's shows. They need a two-year lead time to make a production. Without quotas, the pipeline could dry up. We're in production now, but we don't know if we will have any production next year. Australia's Small Business Ombudsman says 86% of screen production is done by small companies. If the quota pause goes on for too long, many face financial ruin. Literally thousands of those businesses go under. If the government doesn't make it really clear now that the current suspension of the quota system won't go beyond the end of the financial year. The wider economic loss could also be severe. The sector is worth about $6 billion to the local economy and creates about 50,000 jobs each year. There's also a cultural benefit in telling uniquely Australian stories to the rest of the world. The government will make a decision on restoring quotas later this year. The timing will depend on how quickly the screen sector can restore production. But a children's animation producer in Tasmania says local jobs are already at risk. He wants the quotas reinstated immediately. We might have 30 families hanging off um, one of our productions and so when that comes to a halt, the spin-off effect is not just for Blue Rocket but actually for a much broader part of the community here. His fear is that Australia could face the same fate as the UK. A number of its companies went bankrupt in 2003 when quotas on children's content were removed. I think if we um, don't have quotas, the impact will be catastrophic. But the networks are moving content from prime spots, arguing audiences are no longer there. The average child audience has been a thousand children. Now clearly that isn't a sustainable audience level to enable us to continue with the quota obligations. For now, video streaming giants like Netflix don't face those obligations and don't want to. But the local film and TV industry says that has to change. And a level playing field that means that a Netflix has to do the same uh, 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 amount of commissioning as Channel 7 should. And if we can get those things to come together, we'll have a buoyant market. Calls like that were being made long before the COVID crisis. There's now urgency to find the answers before homegrown content disappears from our screens. You call that a good salary? I want to be effluent, Mum. Effluent! Don't we all? The Sim Kadem there. And that's all from the business. For